Now the best times in racing are when testosterone, pride, adrenaline and ego all mash together in one big mixing pot of… stuff. The sort of incidents that make drivers get out of their cars and make a beeline for the driver of another team because they did something that they feel so aggrieved about they need to go and sort it out, with all the mechanics being, leave it out Dave, it ain't worth it. You know the kind of stuff that gets narrated by Murray Walker going, he's storming down the pit lane, he's going to have it out with David Coulthard, or just a simple, good lord, that's Matt Kenseth. Stuff that could easily be improved by putting Jerry, Jerry, Jerry over the top or Stone Cold Steve Austin's entrance music as Clint Boyer sprints towards the, you know, the DuPont truck. And somewhere in the middle of all that is Jeff Gordon. Because that's what NASCAR is, isn't it? It's just WWE V8 motors. Those are the fights to get caught on camera. And one of the more famous fights, well, more confrontations, is the 1993 Japanese Grand Prix, where Edmund, Eddie, Irvine met Ayat and Senna. Now, Irvine was actually on his debut in this race, driving for Eddie Jordan's eponymous team, being part of the merry-go-round of pay drivers in the second car that year. Rubens Barrichello had the first car for the whole year, but the second seat was filled by Ivan Capelli for the first two rounds, Thierry Boutsen from rounds 3 through to 12, Marco Acapella for round 13, Emanuele Nespetti for round 14, and then Irvine would have the seat for the Japanese and the Australian Grand Prix, before having the seat full-time from 1994 through to the end of 1995, and then join Ferrari in 1996. And as it so happens, Acapella often gets credited with the shortest ever Formula 1 career, lasting just 800 metres at the Italian Grand Prix. But there is another driver who lasted even shorter. Even less? Even shorter? Me fail English? That's impossible. Ernst Luf entered the 1953 German Grand Prix, but as the green flag dropped, he dumped the clutch to get away and the fuel pump went pop. While Acapella lasted 800 metres, Luf lasted barely 6 feet. He went out as far as I am tall, near enough. But with bonus facts out of the way, we head back to Japan. Now, Irvine had a lot of experience at Suzuka due to him racing there a lot in Japanese Formula 3000, and he'd actually finished second in the Japanese F3000 Championship that year. It's also rumoured that in his Ferrari days, Eddie's setups would be copied to Schumacher's car as Irvine knew the track so much better, and some even go as far to say that Michael couldn't set up a car but was so good he could just extract everything from what he was given, but that's probably something made up on the internet to either hype up Michael's abilities or slam Michael's abilities, depending on who wrote it. And this knowledge and experience of Suzuka showed as Eddie put his car on the grid in the top 10. 8th to be precise, while Barrichello was 12th, about 4 tenths of a second behind him. As a measure as to how spread out the grid was in those days, Jean-Marc Gounon in the Minardi was 6.6 .6 seconds off Prost pole time. And it's actually interesting to see these anomalies from Malaysia and Herbert though. I wonder what caused those? Maybe mechanical issues on time lapse or something because everybody else improved on the Saturday afternoon. And at the start, Irvine managed to get around Warwick and also nabbed Hill and Schumacher into Turn 1 and 2 by taking his favoured line, which was the outside of 1 and 2, because, you know, carry more speed and so on. Either way, it worked. And this got him up to 5th, but on the next lap, Schumacher overtook his future teammate while Hill got by two laps later. Hill then started to pick up the pace. First, he got past Schumacher on the start-finish straight and then had a go at Gerhard Berger into the chicane. But as Berger went to defend the inside line, Damon tried to go around the outside and Schumacher, who was chasing them both, ran into the back of Damon and the Benetton suspension was completely wrecked. Damon was able to continue and Senna meanwhile had taken the lead from Prost, but then pitted for new tyres, so Prost retook the lead of the race. But then it started to rain. But despite both of them being on slicks when it started raining, Senna was able to catch and pass Prost and then they both pitted on the same lap for, for wet tyres. This was on lap 21. By lap 27, Senna was 30 seconds in front of the Williams. The track was at the point where the crossover was imminent. Hill was on slicks, but Eddie was on wets, and while Hill was struggling, Eddie had more grip, but still, he couldn't get by. And if he could pass, he could have probably pulled the gap so that when he came to pit, he wouldn't lose out too much. But catching them both to lap them was Senna, also on wet tyres. Senna managed to lap Irvine and then went after Hill, but Hill almost wiped both of them out as the track still wasn't really ready for dry rubber. 
Senna decided that discretion was the better part of Valor, and instead of sending it like he normally would on another driver, he held back for an opportunity to pass, because Prost was just too far back to worry him. Irvine, meanwhile, decided that Senna was going too slowly and unlapped himself at the 130R. And Senna? Well, he wasn't happy. Senna was even more incandescent with rage when he saw Irvine close downhill and start racing him, sending it into the chicane with the Williams repassing the Jordan in the traction zone, and then down the hill towards the start-finish line. Irvine and Hill continued to trade places, which must have looked good on the telly, but Senna wasn't really enjoying the show that he had a front row seat for. It took some time, but Senna finally relapped Irvine before being let through by Damon. Senna won the race, and Prost was second, but took the fastest lap, which would be the last of the Frenchman's career. And to annoy Senna even further, Irvine had got back on the lead lap at the end of the race. So why was Senna annoyed? Well, he believed in an unwritten rule that basically said if you are lapped by the leaders, that's it. You don't pass them back. He was basically thinking, you're too slow to be on the same lap as me, so... I'm going past and you're not getting by, unless I make a mistake or pit or whatever. Ah, blue flags. Which is a bit of a minefield, isn't it? I might have to do a follow-up video on blue flags because of the blue flag that Hamilton ignored at Monza last weekend. So the race finishes and Senna starts venting in the post-race press conference. He's not mentioning any names, but he's definitely referring to a man who became known as Irv the Swerve. So after the race, he's heading through the paddock and his best mate Gerhard Berger is in one of the hospitality suites sipping on some schnapps. Berger says, ah, come on and have a drink, and Senna, who was teetotal except for you know being on the podium, had this drink. Now Senna, on this occasion, was pissed. Pissed being the British English colloquialism for inebriated. This, plus Berger winding him up a bit, led Senna to head for the Jordan motorhome. And earlier this year, an actual recording of the scuffle surfaced, recorded by Jordan commercial director Ian Phillips, and was played in the Eddie Irvine episode of the podcast F1 on the Edge, which I will link to in the description box for you. Long story short, Senna walks through the door, and Eddie's on a massage table, and Eddie looks up and says, Hey, you looking for me? And Senna says something, and Eddie then says, Look, I was racing. If you weren't going fast enough, there's no problem. You were racing. You took a very big risk to put me out of the race. Is that what you want? Look, I didn't put you in danger. Miss is as good as a mile. You're not a racing driver. You're a fucking idiot. How come I overtook you on wets? I don't remember that. Exactly, because you're not competent enough. Yeah, okay. If that's what you think, I'll watch out for you. Yeah, the FIA will be watching you. That's good. I'll see you out there. And then Senna lamps him, after which Eddie just goes, Insurance claim! But it didn't stop there, because afterwards, journalist Adam Cooper fired up his dictaphone to record Eddie's thoughts, in which he said, He hit me on the temple, and then pushed me off the massage table. I have no respect for the guy at all. Even before this race, I had no respect for him. I used to think he was the best driver by a long, long way, and I don't really think that's the case now. I think Schumacher's at least his equal, and I think Hakkinen is going to give him a very hard time. I think the guy's got a serious problem. He thinks he's God's gift to the racing driver. It's a game of marbles, but he wants to keep all the marbles. The typical Irvine, he never apologised. Eddie almost won the world title in 1999, although he was helped a little bit by Schumacher breaking his leg, otherwise he wouldn't have really had a shot. He retired in the early 2000s after a stint with Jaguar, which he claims he ripped off. He's now involved in property development or something like that, and his Instagram is worth a follow. He still has that no-nonsense guy enjoying life attitude, and he often responds to comments in his typical style. He also posts the odd political cartoon that does nothing but get a rise out of people, and you can just imagine him just posting it going, <laughs> that will wind him up. But that said, he was my sort of driver. Just didn't care what other people thought of him. Just got on with it. So there's the story of the time Senna punched Irvine for unlapping himself. If you've learned something here today, then like the video, and for more like this, click subscribe, get that bell on, so you never miss out on a future video. Big up to the Patreon Massive who continue to support this channel, and if you want to join them at supporting me at a more personal level, or just get down on some chilled out Discord chatter, then I will leave all the links you need in the description box for you. So until next time, I've been Aidan Mord, have a great day wherever you are, and I'll see you all again soon for another video. So until then, goodbye.